Well, it's Monday, Monday night, and there was supposed to be a game tonight, but unfortunately, uh, there is a major storm out in the Wichita area. So that game between Salina and the ICT Wichita Regulators will not be played tonight. However, um, for both Salina and Wichita fans, there is something for you guys. I did interview a f- old friend of mine, Red Shields, yesterday, and that interview was up now on the channel and everything like that. So yeah, that's the that's the least bit of worry about the AFL right now. Unfortunately, the past few days have been a complete unraveling of things that have been beyond comprehension that has gotten everyone. We're talking big, big time people in the sports YouTube space involved, big time media outlets involved, big everybody. Everybody is involved in this now. We're all looking at this nonsense and we're laughing at it. It's it's a it's a shame really that it has come to this, but this is what we are at right now. You have the Iowa Rampage folding. You have other teams that are in danger of folding. You have teams that have not been paid. You have players that have not been paid, coaches that have not been paid, owners, you know, trying to get answers from Lee Hutton, who has disappeared off the face of the earth. You have West Texas being blocked from playing in the AFL. So, therefore, the NAL has actually won their case for the moment. Anyway, I know there's all sorts of legal ramifications and everything like that. Like maybe West Texas could potentially, you know, try and do something to either A, go back and play in the NAL, or B, go dormant. So you might be a Bloomington Edge type thing. That's basically where West Texas is headed. Or you could be a West Michigan and go into a lower league, you know, and be completely, you know, I don't even know what the GL, GLAF championship scenario is like right now because there was some games canceled and everything like that. But we don't know when that game will happen. Who cares about what West Michigan's doing right now? The focus here is the AFL um, to start. Philadelphia, we don't know what kind of roster they brought. They brought it to Minnesota with Minnesota's terrible nets. Um Things looked dire. Everything was in dire straits, and yet the game happened. It happened. Oregon still, you know, yes, they have stable ownership, but they're playing in a place that is not suited for arena football. We've we've established this already. Um, yeah, don't like it. Don't like it at all. Um, hopefully, Oregon moves to where the high desert storm played. I think that's a rumor that's going around. You have Steven Titus, you have Rapid City. They're all angry at Lee Hutton for, you know, things that, you know, are not, you know, that Lee Hutton just, just simply ain't going to fix. He's not going to fix it at this point. You know, and Trevell Gaines has mysteriously been removed from the AFL website. You have Mike Hines being removed from the AFL website. You have the Oh, yep, the CIF commissioner that was going to be the CIF commissioner when the CIF was going to go with, you know, the Kansas teams and everything like that, and Billings and Rapid City, you know, for the 2024 season before the AFL took it over. Yeah, there's, there's you know, they, they, that, that, that's a whole situation now. So there's a lot of things going completely, completely wrong. You have teams, again, teams are being rumored to fold, like Louisiana, Philadelphia, Georgia, Minnesota, you know, because, I mean, again, there's just too many factors going into things that have made things a lot worse than it needs to be. And, you know, now West Texas can't play. So there's that. Uh, I guess the you know the streams have not been very good either. Albany did beat Nashville, probably the best game of the AFL's week. You know, like West Texas, Orlando was a terrible game. Billings, you know, Washington has a nice arena, but that was also a terrible game. Most of these games were blowouts. Um, in the IFL, honestly, you almost forgot. I almost forgot the IFL was even playing this week. But I mean. 
Everybody except Duke City has a win now. Jacksonville beat Tulsa. Sioux Falls beat Green Bay. Uh, Vegas is still unbeaten. Frisco beat San Antonio off of San Casanova interceptions. Iowa almost blew a 52-24 lead. San Diego got a big win against Northern Arizona. In the AAL2, Wheeling is still Wheeling. You know, they, they are clearly the big dogs at the top. Shout out to my boy Joshua Franklin, you know, um, 21-6. They beat the Dallas Falcons, so you can't say – that it was Philadelphia, the, the Dallas Falcons went up to, you know, Minnesota this week. You can't say that. Um, NAL, I know people are, I know, I know people are going to rag on me about Colorado, Idaho, and Oklahoma. Yeah, but, I mean, honestly, again, like I've said, Oklahoma's probably the worst team in the NAL right now. Um, they have not played a home game yet. They should be playing a home game this week, hopefully. Um, yeah, Colorado Idaho was a game that happened. It was it was a terrible stream, but it happened. Colorado got beat Idaho 34-33 off of some shenanigans in which Idaho almost got an onside, didn't get a two-point inversion. Omaha had to fight off Oklahoma in a game that was surprisingly close. Like Oklahoma was in the lead at one point. And again, this has happened a couple times this year to where Oklahoma, Omaha, the beef have you know played kind of down a little bit to other teams. Um, the other big game, the other game was a uh, another big game that was a cross league matchup between the AL 2s Jersey Bearcats, who again I think will be the team playing wheeling in the AL 2 championship, and the Harrisburg Stampede. And surprisingly, yes, this game was very very close. Again, Jersey is a legit organization. I the, again, the problem with Jersey, the problem with the Bearcats is that they're not playing where Philadelphia is supposed to be playing. They're playing in a, another arena. Um, so, yeah, there's that and everything like that. So, I mean, what else can you really say about this week? Because, I mean, Harrisburg, that game was very much close the entire game. Harrisburg was down to, like, their third-string quarterback and everything like that. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what else to say, really. I mean, there's a bunch of other blowouts that games that happened in the AL2 between AL2 teams and non-league opponents. I mean, there's just nothing you can do about that because of the way the schedule has to work out with teams being removed and everything like that. But, yeah, um, there's also um, some games that are being moved around as we speak. The Minnesota-Albany game due to the Timberwolves is being moved. Um, from the Target Center to MVP Arena. And again, MVP Arena is being used for graduations um, this past, um, this upcoming weekend. So that game got moved to a Monday night. So naturally, I do not want to have to do another Monday night in, this weekend indoor football, but I'm going to have to uh, because I, I don't want to, but I, I'm going to, I'm going to have to. So, you know, when it comes down to it, there's that. And then there's also the Don Montero news, which broke. Um, this past week as well in the AIF. That was the only other big thing from the AIF that happened was, you know, Montero going after the boy, um, Shady Sports Network. But again, Shady was a little bit wrong in some of his assumptions. He had good intentions, but um, some of the stuff was a little bit wrong. But the, but the um, comments that Don Montero made were absolutely unnecessary, did not need to be made. So that's why the AIF suspended. It wasn't about, you know, the whole housing situation. Thankfully, Speedy Clark cleared that up on Saturday. If you watched around the indoor world on his on Shady's network, kind of cleared that up. Um, so there's that. So it's not about bad housing or anything. It's just Don Montero being a complete idiot and saying stuff that he shouldn't be saying. Like you have to you have to be a professional, unfortunately. And some teams do not act like professionals. Like today, again, Oregon vehemently denied the boy, you know, uh, Sam Sharp of the um, Pro Arena Talk. He would be they, whoever runs the Oregon account was like, you know, this this is a lie. This is some this is some BS. This is this is this is, this is not it. This is this is a, this. What are you talking about? You're a fake journalist. You're a liar. You're a cheater and everything like that. And under the sun, you know. Like, or like whoever running whoever's running Oregon's page needs to chill, chill out a little bit, bro. We're just trying to get the facts straight. 
we were all trying to get the facts straight because, you know, a lot of things are kept under the rug. You know, this person's been in this thing for the past six years, you know, covering this sport. And, you know, it's really been covering on a weekly basis the last four years. I've only been covering for the last four years on a weekly basis. And I've only in the last couple of years really started to dig, you know, more in depth, you know, especially this year. I've definitely been doing way more digging than I need to be doing in some of these leagues and teams, you know. So, again, I've waited long enough for the AFL to continue doing what they continue to do. But there's just no there's just no hope anymore. Um, I don't know. I don't know how many teams we're going to end up with because two are gone now already and a lot more are getting rumored to be cut off the chopping block and i to be completely honest i hope so um i am a i am one of those guys who thinks that there should be less arena leagues there should be less of al2 type teams so you know no disrespect to my boys you know out at Rockwall, Waco, Texas, and Dallas. No disrespect to Peach State. No disrespect to the Maryland teams or the Carolina Predators, who still kind of lurk around, even though they don't play in the AL2 anymore, apparently. You know, there's just no room for teams like that. There's no room for AFL teams like Minnesota, who can't draw anybody. Like, they had to, you know, make only one, like, five sections open for the game this past weekend and it would just look terrible. You know, there's, it seems like Washington that's giving great effort that should be in a higher league. That should be in a better league than this, you know, like, come on, come on, Washington, come on, Oregon. I w- again, I wish the AWFC teams just moved to the NAL. That's what I wanted. And the CIF teams kind of just do their own thing, but you know, things had to happen the way it had to happen. And that's why we have an AFL 3.0, you know, that you know we knew was coming but we didn't know how bad it was going to get and it's gotten really really bad i hope that things get a little bit better this upcoming week but if not i don't know what else to say like there's nothing i can say there's nothing i can do personally you know i'm not in a i'm not in an area where an afl 3.0 team is at so who knows yeah, broadcasting issues too. I don't even want to talk about you know some of these streams for the AFL because again, Vire TV is terrible. And then yeah, you know, like um, I think it was the Washington game. You know, it was either the Washington or the Oregon game that was absolutely dreadful to listen to. And then of course, West Texas Orlando was an offensive dud in every regard. So like the AFL 3.0 hasn't really been competitive so far. And there hasn't been really too much to say about the games themselves because all the off-field stuff has been dominating, permeating, and just, you know, just stinking the bed up. Um, The guys, like, again, Red and Wichita and Salina, I hope all of y'all are okay. I hope everybody in Kansas is okay because, again, that storm tonight will have tornadoes and stuff like that, apparently. Hope y'all are safe and everything like that. Um, again, to teams like Rapid City and Billings who know what they need to do, who know what they want. Um, again, just go to Wich- just tell tell the guy who owns Wichita, who was going to be your commissioner, tell 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 him to just say, hey, we need to start the CIF back up real quick, you know. So that's all I really can say. And then the other teams, like I know Nashville was like, well, you know, we wanted to play without the Iron Man rules and stuff like that. And all but he was like, nah, we're also going to use college footballs and stuff like that. Is that okay with y'all, Nashville? Nashville's like, no, not really. It, it's it's rough. It's a rough situation all around. Like, what do you do? Big Boy Sports signing out, and I'll see you Saturday morning with a couple of videos. Um, 
one will be a WNBA hype video. The other will be a special collab. So stick around for that. I'll see y'all soon.